Yeah. We're going to open the meeting at uh, 6.03. Okay. Anybody have any adjustments? I have one. Um, I can give a, a brief uh, update on the derelict buildings issue. A um, couple, couple points on that. From, but that's it for me. Okay. And, just, and then just to mention that um, Chuck said there really wasn't much to report okay. for a town highway. So, okay. so he's... I'd like to I mean, say a couple things about the bachelor land when we get to the... All right, I'll uh, edit on here. Okay. Where do you want to do that under? Um, well, it's when I talk about the town hall. Okay, I'll put bachelor land. You got anything? I'm good, I'm otherwise. Good. Otherwise. All right, um, public comment. We have only one public here. You're good? Oh, that's right, Diane. I forget. Well, I'm used to her. I'm, the problem is I'm used to her being here. A fixture. You good? Okay. Monty's becoming a fixture. Monty's becoming a fixture. We won't notice him soon. Okay, um, approve the bills. I guess I've signed them. Michael signed them, so we could. Uh, all but one. Set of bills, which I will. You want to just sign, uh, approved by signature? Okay. Sure. Yep. Um, how about the minutes? We're up to the minutes. I'm good with I'm minutes. Good. I'll maintain a motion. I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from the January 10th, uh, 2022 select board meeting. I will second Michael Gray's motion. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We're up to Robin. Well, since the last meeting, it's pretty much been the town report. Mm -hmm. I bet. Yeah. And I have got all of the, I might have had it done for the last meeting, all of the dog licenses printed out. So when people come in, they, mm -hmm. they're all set to go. And we have gotten a few candidates to be put mm -hmm. onto the ballot. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know who they are or sure. what position they're for? Mm -hmm. Why not? Moderator for Stephen Murphy. That'd be good. Town clerk, myself. Lucky you. One year selectman, Jason Thompson. All right. One year select person, Peter Peltz. Mm -hmm. Three year select person, Diana Peduzzi. Ooh. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Three year lister, Mary Jen Jemmy. Mm -hmm. Three year auditor, John Reed, who was very helpful for putting the town report he together. Sure was, yeah. And we have a uh, one year auditor, Jane Lorendo. Mm -hmm. Lorendo, okay. Lorendo, perfect. Tax code delinquent. Collector of, of delinquent, delinquent taxes. taxes. It's almost painful. <laughs> it's almost painful to have that discussion every meeting. Right. <laughs> Cemetery commissioner for five great. years, Amy Eldred. Mm -hmm. Hazen board three years, Christopher Casey. And that's it. Okay. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. good. Good to see some interest. Do you have a sense of what ones are going to be kind of blanks? Uh, well, but we still have an auditor. Okay. A two year. Two years of remaining of a three-year auditor, yeah. right? Yeah. So maybe there are any points. That's that'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. And we have a new assistant at the town hall, Pam mm -hmm. Kuda. Her husband Bruce, who has since passed away, he used to be on the um, planning commission years ago. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Wow. And I think that's it. Okay. Anyone got a question for Robin? Um, I'll have some questions when we get down to the zoning notices of violation. We'll just wait till then, I guess. Okay. We got the estimate of the audit of the town office oh. back. Oh. Good. That was a question I wanted to ask you if that actually happened or not. It yep. sounds like it did. Yeah. Yeah, he's got it dated January 17th. It came in at $6,761. Yep. Okay. So I guess at some point we'll talk about this. And, yep. Uh, well, that's it. That's, it down for that's to do this year. No, there's no. Um, we're good this year then. Yeah. Okay. We're, I, I mean, we can do some of it this fiscal year. It's basically for us to decide, you know, 
whether we want to do it all at once or prioritize different parts, it'll, it'll be definitely something to think about and discuss and, and make a plan for. Uh, I'm not sure what all is on there at this point. But, um, yeah. Okay. If you send it's that to all, us, it's all pretty reasonable. Email? Yeah. It's not in the budget. No, it's not in the budget. That's the thing. Yep. Yep. But we did. Did we put it in the 23 budget? No. We didn't. No, but we did put extra money in the building um, fund. To do it. Okay. Yeah. So, right. And that's probably where, so where we go. If we get ARPA money for the town hall, then. I was going to say, can right. any of the ARPA money, can that fall under any of that? We, we'd have to check it out. We'd, we'd have to sure. look. Okay. Yeah. It yeah. has to have some connection. Yeah, I don't think I don't think much would actually carry over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It has to be kind of related to. It has to be related pandemic to the pandemic. Issues. Yeah. Well, it's to keep the germs out so we stay healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to federal funding 101. <laughs> you have a round hole, and they give you an oblong peg that you got to put in there. That's what federal funders do. All right. Anyone else getting for Robin? No, I do not. And we've treasurer. Actually, I guess Brandy is Brandy's out. out with us. We did have bills to sign, so yeah. Yeah. and we've paid our bills, so we're good for another two weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and that Tom mm -hmm. came in today and did the payroll. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, he did up those bills. Too. He did all the oh, bills, so we had to, uh, we had eight P to do mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're up to town hall renovation. Mm -hmm. You're there already? We, we are. are. We're, We're just flying. flying. Zipping right oh, along. Goodness. So, uh, you all probably know on our little ad hoc committee, we have two very experienced, knowledgeable uh, historic preservation people. One is uh, um, Liz Pritchett, who lived in town for many years, and she's the one that adds that building and this building put on the National Historic Register. Register. Yeah. Uh, and the other one is Mary Jo Llewellyn, who lives out in Logtown. They both uh, worked for the state for many years, and Liz is now retired, and um, Mary Jo is, is a consultant. So uh, we talk, we've had a few little meetings, and mm -hmm. Michael's working on the bat situation. To have it but up in order to, to get ready to put in for some ARPA money, we need to get some estimates of what it might cost. And we can't do anything, of course, until we get the historic preservation part um, taken care of. Uh, so we know what, what we can and can't do. So anyways, they suggested that we hire Jan Lewandowski, who is an expert consultant. Um, I think he lives in Stannard. He's a specialist in timber frame buildings, which is what we have. And we can either ask the state for $250 towards a $500 project, which would be a small report, or we can just give him $1,000 for a better report. And that way we don't have to putz around with the state. You know, the, um, they're, um, Mary Jo's contacted them a few times and they're busy and all that. So um, we, assuming that the town hall project is going to um, qualify for ARPA money, and I don't know who else in the town is going to get any. Haven't heard much about that yet. But anyways, what we do spend on this now, we could take Just out keep of the ARPA track money. Of it. Yeah, if it applies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, in addition to that thousand dollars, I'd like to have you approve two to five hundred dollars for an energy audit, because that would bring us some. Um, prices like this uh, one for the town office. Right. I, I think the audit itself, um, and that's, um, you know, not, doesn't account for the work that, that it's suggested is, that's a $200, it's pretty much a straight rate right. of $200 oh, okay. uh, through so efficiency Vermont. And I'm pretty sure we've got a few thousand dollars in the fund for that building to Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. And we did put some more. We put ten toward it for next year for next too. Year. So. Yeah. Right. So that's your request would be fifteen hundred dollars. Right. Which would probably be reimbursable. It yeah. might not be five hundred. Even if it isn't which re potentially, yeah. If you were yeah. only going for five hundred dollars, why would you request two hundred from the state? But now you're up to a thousand dollars, you requested no money from the state. Right. Why? Because it's not worth the rather. It's not worth the losing the time. Um, if we 
get $200 towards a $500 study, then we only have a $500 study, which is why can't not you Why can't you put the 200 towards the $1,000 study? Um, I, that's not the way the program works, according to Mary Jo, who's okay. Uh, who's welcome to know, state programs. Who's the one? I, just, <laughs> I mean, if we can yeah. spend two hundred and fifty dollars, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. my tax money. Yeah, she's they, been trying to she's been trying to contact these people, and it's been really. My, my hard. understanding of that situation um, is also that the thousand dollars would be, we would get a much more um, extensive report from. Jan Lewandowski, which would be actually mm. a benefit in the planning of, of the renovation yeah. of the town hall. Well, I just wasn't understanding how come yeah. we still couldn't apply right. for the 250 even though we're Could, going for a larger right. amount. Yeah, because yeah. I think it's the way their program works. I've run into programs like that. You get a you get the Yugo for 500 bucks, and they'll pay $200 of it, or you get the good report for 1000 if you buy it yourself. Yeah. But they won't give you the money toward 1000 It makes zero sense. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's anything that state and federal program-wise that's how it works, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So what do you so folks want to do? I make a motion to approve the $1,500 mm -hmm. towards motion the... Motion to approve? Rose, uh, the more robust, complete study. Yeah. I'll second that. Motion to second. Is there discussion? Is there any other person that can do that? that really? Um, this vision, I mean. Mary Jo really highly recommended this guy. He's local and he's experienced, and you know yeah. we don't need to go out to bid for right it's under uh, a thousand dollar contract. So. Yeah, yeah, he definitely is kind of top in his field. He's for Northern Vermont. Any other discussion or questions? We'll vote on it. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Anybody bud if it passes. So I can give you a bad update. Um, <laughs> <laughs> They're probably hibernating, so we're good. So it's pretty interesting. Is it bad or bad? Yeah. A bad update or a bad update? <laughs> it's a good update. <laughs> it's a good bad update. Um, so I went up into the attic a couple weeks ago, um, maybe three weeks ago, can't remember. Um, and I took some samples of some of the bat guano um, and we sent it to uh, Fish and Wildlife. And it turns out that um, the, what we have in the attic um, is the little brown bat, which is on the state's endangered species list at this point. Of course it is. Yeah, of course. How much um, more does that cost? <laughs> yeah. um, so we'll definitely, you know, we'll, one, there, there were no bats there at all. I had a couple of pretty strong lights with me. Um, I didn't see any sign of um, bats at all. Um, but um, so I was thinking of, of contacting the um, the uh, eliminator pest control person. We got the um, the invoice to do the exclusion work and and the sealing up of the the fascia on the, on the um, north side to keep the bats out. Um, I don't know whether they would do it this winter or first thing this spring, but if we can um, get it closed up before the bats return, um, then, uh, then we don't have to worry about them being in there. And there really isn't a whole lot of uh, bat guano there in the attic. It's really pretty minimal, which was and most of it's on either end of the gables. That seems to be where they where they hang out. And of course, one end is right where you go through the door to get up in there. Um, but uh, there were just little piles um, all, all along the edge of the of the gables, and and a little bit going through the uh, the, the main uh, roof beam, the peak peak beam. Um, and it definitely it was interesting to see that it was pretty much. Uh, uh, logs and wood pins mm -hmm. holding all that stuff together. It's um, 18 yeah. up, but it's old. I couldn't see. You know, there was there is a fair amount of um, a blown-in insulation on top, so I couldn't see how it all connected underneath. But um, so yeah, so that's pretty much. Um, you know, I think that if we can get so to have the contractor deal with it. As when? soon as as soon as they want, I mean, we approved could, doing it, didn't we? We did. We yeah, did so I think doing we just it. get yeah. it scheduled and. Yeah, remember, <coughs> right, the estimate was about twenty five hundred dollars, yep. yeah. um, and the cleaning part of it will be hardly anything. I right. think. I think most of the that expense will be closing closing it up. 
and they might want to do it this winter or and then certain hopefully point. that other person come up with a permanent repair for mm -hmm. our roof yeah. yeah so do they take that stuff out of the attic from outside of the building no or do they go inside the building where that little hole in the is? attic they'll, they'll be in the attic getting removing the guano yeah how they do it i don't know i don't about, know but okay. probably a little guano vacuum guano. yeah that, actually but that would work probably, probably some kind of little yeah, vacuum, or something. vacuum. Yeah. Mm. i mean that we don't have vermiculite so, in the attic <laughs> yeah so then after they get the stuff out of the attic does it have to does the building have to sit dormant for a while before we can rent it out again no and we can rent it out now yeah i know we can now yeah. but after all of that dust and everything well you know i would imagine that there wouldn't be much dust coming down into the space below when they when they clean it out it, it really okay. is it's not going to take them much and the, uh, the fellow Marcus did mention that that the cleaning would be pretty minimal and pretty easy to do actually um, okay so um, I mean they basically the guano is pretty much sitting on top of the um, the uh, insulation the blown-in paper insulation okay. that's there so yeah probably somebody with a shop vac could also do it although there is a fair amount up in the peaks of the gables that they'll need to remove somehow but um, okay but mm -hmm. yeah I was expecting like you know six inches everywhere of stuff right. and, and that's not not the case so um, so yeah it should be should be able to use it um, yep. I don't think there'll be any restrictions once okay. they're done yeah. is that it for town hall I think so okay let's see man we're zipping along we're gonna get a world record I hope <laughs> My All right, seven. we are up to special town meeting. Well, we were gonna. Oh. I was gonna talk about that bathroom. Yeah, I was gonna do it here. So go ahead. Yep. Okay. So um, yeah, all the people involved have died. The lawyer is messing with a, you know, setting up different estates for them and trying to find heirs and things like that. So that's gonna take some time. But in the meantime, the Housing and Conservation Board is interested in giving us the purchase price plus. They're happy to give other um, money for upfront costs, lake assessments, and appraisals, and things like that. So we need to have an appraisal. Don't need to have a, a survey. We don't? No. Really? Oh, no no survey that. required. Um, what are you talking about? Uh, a wetland area over off um, Cranberry Meadow. Yep. This has been ongoing a couple of years. Yeah, now. it has been going on for a while. Yeah, it started right before this COVID hit. We're talking about town hall. They're supposed to town meeting. I didn't know what we're doing. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I stuck her in there in between. In there. Yeah. So anyways, I got an, uh, an estimate for an appraisal for $2,000. Um, mm -hmm. Matt Peters, who is a consulting ecologist who lives here in town, mm -hmm. volunteered to do a very nice two-page letter about what a special place it is. Mm -hmm. And then he suggested that um, VHCB might also pay for an assessment of other things that might be there that could be researched. So he gave me an estimate of $600 for that. Mm -hmm. And Chris Green gave me an estimate of $550 for any legal expense that might have to be done on mm -hmm. our end. Mm -hmm. And all that can be um, uh, paid for by the VHCB as part of the project, but it's reimbursable. Um, the actual money for the purchase will be presented at the closing directly from them. It doesn't have to go through the town. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, these few things um, we apply for, I forgot the name of the grant. I didn't bring the file, but mm -hmm. um, uh, the first step in the program is to do these assessments and that would be reimbursable. So I thought maybe about asking the Conservation Commission whether we should take the money from their fund. And I mean, it would be reimbursed, you know, so. Since it's not really budgeted in the town. Would you just tell me what VHCB stands Vermont, for? Vermont Housing and Conservation Board. Thank you. Yeah, yeah um, the Conservation Commission, they have that uh, wetland fund yeah. Yeah. I would think that they would be, I mean, um, amiable to that. I'm a member of that, the conservation. Oh, yeah, I wonder whether Brandy would prefer to have it that way since there's nothing budgeted for this right. in the town. 
budget anywhere. Yeah, no. I mean, uh, we'll, um, I ask guess, you. yeah, ask Paul. Yeah. Paul Counselor, and we can, you know, we, we didn't have a meeting this month, but we could decide that in February. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. You're good with that? Yeah. There's the update. Yeah, All right. Good, good with that? Okay. <laughs> Special town meeting. So okay. Michael got an update on yeah, what okay. we can and can't do with the special town meeting, yeah, which is very clear, thank, thankfully. Yeah, it took forever, though. It took forever to get, but we got it. Okay. So um, at our last meeting, we had decided the best thing to do would be to vote on the Australian ballot with an Australian ballot. Which um, they said you can't do. Can't which you? they said we can't do. Um, and, the, um, and so we basically um, have to have a meeting um, from the floor to, to decide that. Um, so, and we got uh, confirmation both from VLCT and from the Secretary of State's office. So, um, and they, they agreed. Mm -hmm. Wow. One that thing impressive. that um, we could do, um, if we want to, and it would have to happen in the meeting, is that, um, and I'm just going to read, this is from Susan Stenning, a lawyer at VLCT. Um, one option would be to open and then vote to continue the special town meeting to a date, time, place, certain, effectively postponing the meeting until it is safer to be in person or it's warmer and you can hold the meeting outside. And then she just reiterates that voting to switch to Australian ballot um, uh, by using an Australian ballot is not an option. Um, so essentially those attending the meeting would have to make that decision. They would have to Correct. make that okay. decision, yeah. So we don't even need to be involved in that. Yeah. And you know, m my concern for this meeting is that we are kind of at the height of this new surge of COVID and um, I don't know how many people are gonna feel safe coming to this meeting. Um, we're gonna be voting by Australian ballot for this year's items town, um, yeah. on the town warning anyway. Um, to me, I mean, um, just as for my own personal opinion, it would make, I would feel better if we did postpone it in the meeting to a time when things were a little bit uh, more laid back in the world of COVID pandemic um, so that more people could attend and participate. I mean, it's a pretty important decision to mm -hmm. make and it would seem kind of weird to make it have like 10 or 15 or 20 people yeah. there to make that decision. But that's my opinion. Diana. I've got another idea. Um, <clears throat> since it's not, you know, even if it passed, it wouldn't take effect this year. So the people who submitted the petition could actually withdraw it and send, put it back in, say, in May or June, when things might have changed or we could hold an outdoor meeting, but that would be up to them. Well, so what, what that is in the stat, I read the statute the last thing. What would have to happen is enough petition signers would have to withdraw their signature to well, drop it below yeah, the 5%. But it wouldn't be, wouldn't be withdrawing, it would just be physically he could say, okay, I'm going to take this back for now, and then he could bring it in any time, you know, in a couple of months. Who knows what uh, COVID is going to be like, but still, at least we could have a meeting outdoors. COVID and needs to go on vacation. Uncomfortable really about tired of COVID. <laughs> Uncomfortable about coming to an open meeting when they've been trying so hard to stay away from crowds. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think? What are your thoughts? But you this would, is kind of your your well, that's thing. Right. So There's all the people. This, so that's why I said what I, I said is that's what the statute says. And um, I mean, say a lot of people are, are concerned with going to the meeting. A lot of people aren't concerned about going to the meeting either. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's right. it's a it's a fine line. I mean, I, I could ask them to the sign them, but I don't think they would want to. Uh -huh. How many, what number of people would you need to, what, what's 5% of them? It's like 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 36. So what the statute, it says, if, if you had, say you had 40 and five people using the number 36, mm -hmm. took their names off, which you'd have to tell Robin that, um, that would nullify the meeting. But I think you had more than that. Oh, yeah, yeah. 45 or something. I mean, it's clear enough they want to have, have a meeting. I just, the only other option is those attending the meeting could, but t to me, it seems like if you're in the meeting, you're already there. You're already there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yep. it's, I it's really not up to this board at this point. Right. It's, we've scheduled no, the meeting. Right. We, we, ha yeah. we have to go through. We have to go through with it. it. Yep. 
Yeah. But there is this aspect of being in a room for a certain length of time. Right. So, yeah. So you know, if we could be there and end it within 15 minutes, we're mm -hmm. safer than if we were right. there for a couple hours. And it right. sounds like it's going to be up to those attending the meeting whether they choose to vote on it mm -hmm. right. or whether they choose because again, you're going to be voting and debating. Either way, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. people show up that might already have their minds made up and they can just. Well, I'm assuming that's probably the case because this is one of those type of issues. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. But yeah. We, it does mean we don't need to have the informational meeting on no, the 5th because there's not much. Have it. I mean, it, again, I just, this is a really simple issue. I mean, it might be, it has a lot of implications that aren't simple, but, you know, it's a kind of a, you either think it's good or you don't think it's good. Yeah, the informational meeting would be no, know, no we had thought of that, that if we were just that we was going to be yeah. Out. That's why I was glad they were clear about it. Yeah. Like very rarely do you get clear guidance, and then two people that give you the same guidance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think an informational meeting is helpful because people don't think about the history involved in town. Well, that's what they can do that in the meeting. Right. That's what they because we're having the meeting, yeah. so they can have that conversation in the meeting. That's what I. That's my thought. Okay. Instead of having two meetings that people don't want to yeah. go to. Yeah. They can just, that, uh, again, I think that's the purpose of why the legislature said you can't vote to change Australian ballot by Australian ballot because they want people to be able to have that conversation. That's uh, kind of what I yeah. gleaned from that. We had originally thought that, you know, the, if we were going to vote for it by Australian ballot, that then the informational meeting would have been important to have, so that discussion could happen. But now that we're um, obliged to actually meet um, in person, then that's where the discussion can happen. Can happen. Can happen. And just we're at the point where it's just out of the board's hands now, so it's just kind of on the right. whatever happens at the meeting, and you want to oversee it. So I've got some comments about that, mm -hmm. if I may. Um, so at the last meeting, I was nominated to or asked if I would serve as a temporary moderator mm -hmm. and volunteer to do that. So I've been doing some research over the last couple of weeks. Um, and I've got some information. I'd like to just give it to you. I've got two extra copies for the public, if you'd like one. Some, some things that we need to consider, some questions, and some of the uh, statutes here. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Thank you. you're welcome. I need to get these one. Sorry. Oh. Um, so one of the duties of the moderator is to preserve order. So we, we've been, at the last meeting, we questioned whether there would be masks required at the meeting. I think that's a big question we need to establish at the outset. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, and then how to preserve order at the meeting. Um, that's another duty of the moderator. We talked about the moderator sometimes working the constable to keep order. Um, and also how there's a process here for, for a moderator to be elected at a meeting. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that, that at the beginning of the meeting, there will be no moderator. There'll exactly. No Can I just ask a question? Yep. Before you get away further. Has Steve Fireman said he wouldn't be at this meeting? Yes, yes he, he, he has he resigned. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He, he was concerned about okay. people okay. being there not wearing masks. Right. Thank you. Yeah. And Paul's going to be out of town. I'm going to so be at a class, so I won't be there. So I would do it otherwise. The vice, the vice chair of the board has going to have to open a meeting. One of these guys know mm -hmm. who that is. Mm -hmm. And then, so under the statute, under section 2657, the, um, in the absence of a, of a moderator, the select board member shall preside until a moderator pro tempore is chosen, temporary mm -hmm. moderator. Um, so I, I'm willing to be, if I am nominated and elected, I would serve. But it's my understanding that there would need to be an election of a moderator. That's true, just, just, just like a town yeah. meeting. Yeah. 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 And, and you can anticipate that you will be yeah. elected moderator. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll be ready. So, uh, um, ready or not. And then I, I was reading the uh, Handbook for Vermont Moderators, mm -hmm. published by the Office of the Vermont Secretary of State. It says there's no requirement that the moderators be sworn before taking office. So we mm -hmm. could just proceed, you just proceed after yeah. the election. Um, 
so then this would, this would bring me back to the, a couple of points I had up at the top there. To prepare for it, I think it would be prudent to have an understanding of how, how the meeting would proceed. Whether or not attendees would be required to wear a mask, does the, does the select board know for certain whether, whether masks would be required of all attendees? Based um, on the rules for the space that we are using, mm -hmm. you would be required to wear a mask. Yeah. Although... And we can anticipate that there will be people not wearing right. a mask. Right, I just don't think we should and, be in a and, position of... And at that point, we're just going to have to deal with that. I mean, maybe we could ask them to isolate themselves away from uh, people who are wearing masks. I, don't, I mean, I don't know how that will go, but there will. I would anticipate there will be people there. That someone's going to... Here's my issue with mask. the... I personally would respect it, some may not. Yeah. Um, I don't want us to be in a position of having to be the mass police because uh, are we going to call the police to arrest somebody? Are we going to, because again, then you've got an issue of violating someone's right to attend the meeting and vote over the mask. So I think a better position is to strongly encourage people to wear the mask, remind them that it's the rules at the school, but I just don't know what you're going to do if someone yeah, flat out refuses. The school, the school, we're using their building with their, I mean, yeah. I know it's our building, but you know, whatever. It's, well, they're, we're yeah. using well, uh, their building, building with their permission. If they decide that we can't use it because we're not abiding by their rules, then and our meeting happen. comes along and we'd be in trouble. Right. But I'm saying the, the problem is what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the censure? I mean, the state police aren't going to come and haul them out. I just right. don't think it's very becoming to have the constable dragging someone down the state. You know where I'm going with this thing. So I, I, yeah, my I suspicion that yeah. most people will talk about it most now. will yeah. comply, and then others will just have to tolerate what happens. Could we yeah. ask the moderator to, I mean, the, the constable to, like, just stand at the door and hand out masks? You could. Monty? I would suggest having an area... For non mass That's what I. Would that's what I would. Well. That's a good idea. Every area, mm -hmm. six to twelve feet away. Right. From if you're uncomfortable else. without the with the mask, anybody because you. Yep. I mean, I will. We'll wear a mask there, but you're going to have people that aren't going. They're not going. Aren't, aren't going. Yeah. They're going to have. They're going to cite statues that say they don't have to, and they shouldn't have to. And I just don't think we want to be in that fight. No. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be. It's, it's also just where I'm putting out there. I'm not. I'm not going to be the person that's. You know. I don't want to be the constable at that event. <laughs> right. But, um, you know, there is a mandate to accommodate elderly and disabled. Right. And you. Mm -hmm. And that's above the mandate to accommodate other people. Mm -hmm. And so I. I would argue that you're in a position of not complying with the public meeting if people who are elderly or disabled feel that they're at risk because there's people there without masks on. Well, there are people that can't wear do masks. feel they're at risk, and and like our our former moderator who is not, you know, not coming and actually resigned as the moderator um, because he was pretty much anticipating that there would be people without masks there, and he didn't want to place himself in that situation. So disenfranchised because there are people that are mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. That's just the, that's the way our, right. And that's then there's the also people that can't oh. wear a mask. Yeah. Whether that's so or not so, but they're going to, there's people making that because I physically can't wear a mask, I got mm -hmm. claustrophobic. It's not, I just, we can't be in that place. I think I like the idea of the separate area because that yeah, should keep people like safe. Well, still, I mean, still, a lot of people, People aren't going to come because even I with the mask. You. That's true. That's People are going to come, not going to come, mask or no mask. Right, so I just, exactly. yeah. because just because everybody's wearing a mask doesn't make people like Steve comfortable. Right, he's yeah. still not going to come. He's still not going to come. Right. Right. This, uh, this issue poses a real dilemma mm -hmm. for, for this, not just our town, it's not just even all to, over to the whole to country. This town. Yeah. <laughs> you look at the statute under 2667. Mm -hmm. The legislative body of the municipality shall take reasonable measures to ensure that voters who are elders who have a disability may conveniently attend annual or special meetings. That interpreta an interpretation of that could, could uh, apply to both sides of this. People who, yes, absolutely. who claim that they have a, a disability Two? So far as they, they shouldn't be exposed to someone who's not wearing a mask and on the other side someone claims they have a disability, they can't wear one. So 
Again, this is important that we talk about yep. this now, and it's I guess the objective is to get as many people yep. as we can to come yeah. to the mm -hmm. meeting mm -hmm. so we yeah. can effectively Me address the articles. Uh, I think the good middle ground is a maskless area. I agree. And we'll just keep it separated by ten, whatever the six feet's the number that they came up with. I don't. I don't know what else to do. Yeah, and then the publication, you know, I mean, obviously we're going to publicize this meeting again. You know, it's been warned and all, but we could mention that um, so that people who might um, be hesitant on coming, um, anticipating that there will be some people not wearing masks. Are those it, people it, going to complain that they're being treated like cattle? You know, we, we, no, we have those well, stanchions. It's, it's, I mean, it's the happy medium. <laughs> they, they, have, they have to be willing to compromise a little bit. Well, we'll cover something that yeah, people will complain about anything, so that's, that's what right. I've discovered. So. Yeah, who knows? No matter what we do, it won't be the right for somebody. Right. I think we just do the best we can. And Okay. And it says, you know, at the end of that, that section 2667, the legislative, for the purposes of this section, that's referring to the accommodations, the legislative body shall have full jurisdiction on the day of the municipal meeting over the premises at which the town meeting yes. is to be held. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so that supersedes the school. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's an agreement that we have in yeah. in the lease also. But again, what the statute is saying is our authority supersedes whatever right. they got. So, yeah. I, I, yeah. does anyone disagree? Right. That's a happy medium. I I think that's the I best compromise we can come. I don't up know with. what else to do. I <laughs> I, I pr propose one more thing, but it's consistent with Mike, what Michael already said. Um, it's, it's just provide a notice to the public, mm -hmm. giving them some information on what will constitute an orderly meeting. Well, way, it's Robert's Rules of Order. Yeah. They're that, supposed to follow. Yeah, yeah. That way, that you know, way, so it's perfectly within your purview as a moderator to say each person, like Steve would do, because uh, having studied Robert's, that's what we're going to follow. Yeah. Um, you as a moderator can say we're going to allow someone to speak for five minutes, say. Yeah. Or you could all agree that it's, it's endless, whatever. You can also do um, we're going to let five, you know, everyone speak once before five people speak twice. You see, those are things you as the moderator can do. Yeah. Yeah. And Stephen, if, if, you know, I'm willing, if you would be willing to help write that notice, I would be willing yeah. to participate in that. And the two, because this meeting will happen before the next select board meeting. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Uh, no, I think we, do we have? I, you may be right. I, don't I think, think we've so. got a three week vacation. We do have support. a three week vacation. Yeah. Yeah. We would, yeah. All right. The first of February so is on Tuesday. Will we do two notices in the papers? You're right. This, this meeting will happen. And then one He's right. Is the next meeting is the 14th of February. Do we, do we have to re-warn the warning? I haven't no. put it in the papers yet. I've just hung it in our five places. Okay. So we've done... Yeah. Um, Was how? it 10 days before the meeting? Five. 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 Yeah. Okay. Are you setting out cards? I thought... Not, not, for the, not for the special, special town meeting. The, the, uh, the regular town meeting. Yeah. So pe for people who might want to request yeah, that. So we should, yeah, send it into the papers. Because uh, this one has to be a live vote. It can't um, be remote. The town website. Yeah. And we'll, it's on the town website. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So what date would you want that notice to be um, finished for public, you know, for posting? There would be the I wording. would have to have it uh, a week from this Thursday, uh, Wednesday, so okay. I can get it into the papers on Thursday. So that'll be the second of second February. of February. Okay, so we'll try to and get that, there. That could include some of this information about yes. the, the conduct of the meeting. It can be yes, very because because again, the whole the, Robert's rules by design is to conduct a meeting where people passionately disagree about something. Mm -hmm. Right. We just don't do it very well because re really you're not supposed to discuss something till there's a motion and somebody seconds it. Because we always discuss it and then someone makes motion. Like usually, <laughs> two people in the room have to agree we want to discuss it and then you discuss it. And I so don't think have any issues. With I don't think it should be disorderly. No, I don't think so. The only thing is, is your mask non mask thing. Right. Other than that, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think it's going to be no. super contentious. There may be some passionate yeah. debate, which is a good there's, thing. There's going to okay. be passionate for, passionate against, yep. and then vote. Well, I don't think it's going to be a big issue. No, I, mean, I, I keep preaching people need to disagree and just be nice still. Yeah, by, by, the, by the disorder, I was just more referring to how we manage the masks. Yeah, or, or yeah I think just well, say this. If, but 
but it, but if it's clearly established that we're going to have separate areas, so mm -hmm. attendees may or may not wear masks. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think I'd make the signage that the expectation would like people to wear a mask. That's okay. what my expectation is. Mm -hmm. However, there'll be a spot if you don't, and we'll have masks available. And okay. should we bring up the stanchions? So nah, I wouldn't do. That. No, that's too. That's, <laughs> that's a little that's too. Much. That's probably too much. Too strong. But you, as the moderator, then can reiterate. We'd we'd really appreciate those that aren't wearing masks to please use this area. If they don't move, I guess we're just stuck with what we. I mean, got. we could have it. You know, at town meeting, usually there's a group that likes to sit at Hide the table in the back, in yeah, the back, <laughs> and then there are other people that sit in the chairs. I'm a back hider. And, and maybe the tables in the back could be the where people without masks can be and and then because and then people you know who are wearing masks who want to do the physical distancing too they could set up in their little little pods or whatever um, and we could try to maybe have the chairs set up that way or um, rather than in the rows that we would typically have because mm -hmm. I'm kind of clueless on how many people will yeah I don't know it could be huge it could be I don't know I really yeah. don't know yeah. so. so I just just laid out the way you want I just yeah yeah, just what you would like to see and have people know and um, following the KISS principle make it something reasonably enough so that everyone can follow it pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. The only other thing I mentioned for you, Steve, is be stern. Yeah. Be stern. You're running the meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're not recognized, you don't talk. That sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Robin will bring the gavel. Bring the gavel. <laughs> right. My experience has been most people will be fairly polite. Yes. Yeah. And I try to know. respect each other's space mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's a discussion, I mean, a lot of towns have debated this and, and some have made the changes and some have chosen not to. So it's not, it's a, it's an issue that um, is, is definitely current and, and has been happening for a number of years. And a lot of towns have switched, so. Yeah. So two things you should be prepared for is um, calling the question. Somebody's probably going to yeah. at some point call the question to stop the discussion. And that, and that must be voted on immediately. That doesn't need a second. Whether, okay, whether or not uh, somebody might ask for a paper ballot. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Sounds like so Just that. check up on your Robert's yeah, rules because like yeah. a couple of motions, like yeah. a motion to adjourn doesn't need a second, a calling the question doesn't need a second, it just needs to be voted and I think it has to pass by a two-thirds. Two-thirds. Mm -hmm. So just yeah. brush up on those type of things, get in your Robert's rules. Mm -hmm. I will. Some of those motions are a little weird. So, Robin, what about the logistics of the meeting? Are you kind of overseeing that as the town clerk or? She's an election official as well as a town clerk. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they'll move my class. I have a class for a job. That's why I can't be there. I hope weekend, so. but I want to be there, but oh well. <laughs> yeah, I, I could be there to help with the weekend. Well. I'm like, okay. nope. yep, I'm going to um, be in Pittsburgh. I think I um, might, they might remote it, but I'll still have to sit in my house and sit through my Zoom screen. I think the school has a PA. Didn't we? Haven't we used the school PA and or let a little amp and a couple of microphones? I, I thought think, Steve had that stuff. I think the last time it was school equipment, and yeah. before yeah. that we had had somebody bring it it's in. It's been two years since we've yeah. had a town meeting, but, so. Uh, yeah. was, was the Gagnons, and then I think um, yeah. HCTV has provided us with some kind well, of... Well, yeah, and uh, Robin Grant brought his stuff one year, yeah. we rented it, okay. and Gagnons a couple of years. But I think the school has something okay. more recent than that. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we we could talk, yeah, yeah, let's talk to John. Yeah. 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 Because John knows mm -hmm. just about all the ins and outs. Yeah. I know we got an amp from the friends of WS bought an amp flyer. Okay, oh, I thought I remember probably. seeing yeah. seeing Six that there. Ago, yeah. maybe. Oh, okay, yeah. maybe that's what it is. And a couple of mics that go with it or at least one mic or I don't remember about the mic situation. Do you remember? I mean from performing mm -hmm. up there? Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll figure that one out. And then I guess we probably should have, each time somebody speaks into the mic, we probably should wipe it down with <laughs> yeah, alcohol. Yeah, that's not really spread in that way. Yeah. Just don't sneeze on somebody. Yeah, put your mouth on. <laughs> yeah. The Omicron is so potentially infectious to take one sneeze will get everybody. <laughs> that's how the stuff's going fast. Everybody I've talked to this say, I got COVID, I got COVID, everybody's got COVID. The whole town that, was very down. Ball. Yeah, oh, it's not encouraging at all. I went one room, 15 people, they all got it. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, yeah. So, Robin, I'm glad to help set up, too, so. You didn't get very okay. sick, but. Then please yeah. include me. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So maybe we'll just... That's we'll what I'm telling you, not it's just Friday to the point where it's... Friday. Friday. Oh, no, this is Saturday. I no, I mean the Friday before yeah. to, to set up. It's late. 
Yep. Set up yeah. the room. Yeah, yeah. This isn't town meeting. It's not town meeting time yet. Yeah. Right, We're but schooling. I mean the, the Friday before there will be school. So yes. you'll have to go in that night. Evening. Or in the morning. And, uh, it's, yeah, well, it starts at 10, so. Yeah. 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 Trying to control this well, reminds me of the reporter standing in front of the volcano so. and saying the government's maybe, got the volcano under control. And I'm like, to supervise that and right. well. some volunteer stuff <laughs> to move tables and stuff. Okay, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, if we had our remote access stuff, which we might but probably not we could try to use it but i don't know you what can't good. vote remotely no, we, no, no not right. for voting but just for people to be able to to listen in yeah listen in or ha or express an opinion i think it'd be um, that's gonna be hard is hctv gonna be there i don't think so that's basketball yeah, um, it's fight club oh, basketball time that's the really? yeah oh. it seems doubtful that they would be um mm. but um leaf was goldberg was going to look into that i did ask him about mm -hmm. it but he did mention that there's a basketball game starting at 11 Saturday mm. morning. So, um, and maybe, that's that's a big draw for the. Maybe we have to dig out our little recorder. Oh. I don't know whatever happened to that. The digital recorder. Yeah, the little recorder yeah. that skipped by a few years ago. I might have that at home. I think you might have. I was it. using it for select board meetings. I know. So I think it's. We're going to have to have some kind of record. Yeah, we will have to keep minutes. You're right. Um, I think that's. I think I have that. Okay. Do you have some kind of t uh, time trajectory on that technology that you? That that's our to next do? subject, isn't it? Oh, it okay. is. Yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're about to get there. Yeah. yeah. No, we're about. That's next. We're going to yeah. talk okay. about buying that yeah. stuff. Hold my questions. We have. We have a listing of what to, what would be needed. Yeah. yeah so I will. I, I know. I have it. I just yeah. have to. <laughs> Hopefully I can find it. I think I know where it is. We have the old cassette recorder, I guess. Right, we could, yeah. <laughs> I have an old cassette recorder, too. Good news. Good luck finding a cassette. Actually, I have a couple. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they have some old meeting minutes on them, actually. <laughs> the meeting um, record recordings. Anything else can you think of for... Seems you good? Like, seems like we're yes. Thank you for that discussion. Okay. I'll give you a brush. Brush up on your Robert's rules because yes. this, this couple of those motions are a little. And, and thank you for being willing. To yes. Thank you, thank you very much. much. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So we are up to remote yeah, access proposal. Michael. Okay. So Leif Goldberg did provide us with um, a list of equipment that we would need. Um, and basically, it would be um, we would need a, a camera, a webcam of sorts. Um, and he, in his proposal, uh, gave us two options. Um, and then uh, we would need a tripod, um, or we could try to clip mount a webcam onto a, a laptop. But a, a tripod would give us more range of motion on where to actually set up the camera. Um, Better. Better, yeah, yeah. So, and the, the tripod is pretty cheap. Um, and then um, the other thing that we would need is microphones. Um, and there are two two considerations. Um, we could probably get by with two mics, especially in in this room. Um, when we move back to the town hall, um, we would probably want um, four mics. So they're a hundred dollars a piece. Yeah, let me mention the prices. So the the two webcams, um, one is for, it's on sale, uh, usually 60 bucks, it's on sale for 28 bucks, and then there's another one uh, with the same price, about 60 bucks, that isn't on sale. Um, there's a good possibility that by the time we order the camera that is on sale, that it might not be on sale. So I was just kind of thinking that $60 for a camera. The tripod is $30. Um, the microphones are $100 a piece, so whether we got two or four, um, it would be either $200 or $400. Um, so then what we would need is a, a small audio mixer. Um, and uh, this would basically, um, so there's two that uh, Leaf um, put on the, uh, the list. One would handle two mics and the other would handle four. So again, whatever we decide on the microphones. Um, 
the, the mixer that would handle two mics is $100. The mixer that would handle four mics is $400. And the, the, the reason for having a mixer is that um, let's, and let's say like Tegan is, is monitoring the remote access on a laptop for the participants. Um, and then um, with the mics in the room, um, and Leaf used to do this when we, when we uh, live streamed from the town hall um, summer, last summer. Um, let's say um, there'd be one for the select board and then some around the room. If somebody is speaking lowly and it's not picking up very good, the, mix, the person monitoring that could turn the mic up and it would, people would be able to hear it better who are doing the remote access. If somebody has a really booming voice, they could turn it down, you know, stuff like that. Question on your mixer. Sure. If you get the one for the four mics, mm -hmm. and you decide to have your meeting here where you only need two mics, can you use that same mixer? Of course, yeah. You okay. just have two mics in there instead of, okay. instead of four. Yeah. Um, so um, the next thing that we would need is speakers that would basically go into the laptop. Um, and these would allow people um, who are speaking through the laptop who are accessing um, the meeting remotely, um, it would allow the people in, that are there in person to be able to hear them better. You know, like when, when Chuck has been here on the laptop, we've all got to listen pretty closely. Um, mm -hmm. Can you listen to computer yeah. speakers? So those speakers are basically, uh, I don't, he, he didn't mention whether, he calls them speakers, so I don't know if that's a pair or it's one. It's usually a pair. Yeah, usually a pair. So it would be, if it is a pair, um, one set of speakers, um, which is five watts, which is your, um, you know, how loud it would be or how loud it could be. Those are $25 and then a pair that um, are 10 watts, which would give us more volume, um, would be $40. That's if they're a pair. So if, less than a thousand bucks. Yeah, so basically, yeah. Yeah, we're getting, yeah. And then if we wanted, um, we could get a larger monitor, um, larger than the uh, uh, laptop monitor. Um, or um, what we could try to do, we have do have a digital projector. Just play it on the on the whatever that thing's called. Play for it. That yeah, thing. yeah, the digital projector. We could um, we could instead of a monitor, we could project the image of the person um, that's speaking um, through the through the remote access, and the remote access would basically be Zoom using the yeah. Zoom yep. video conference and thing. We could project the image. Um, and we already have the. So it looks like camera. a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks. If we if we go for the the, um, I guess I'll call it the best case scenario where we have four mics yeah, and we have the Cadillac. Like, it's, it's just right, pretty much right at a thousand dollars. And we don't need a a different computer to support. The well, um, right? Skip Skip Marcasani did suggest. I mean, we have a number of town laptops, but they're specifically for. Like the Listers, or you know, Brandy has one now, so that she can um, work at home. And you know, Skip is suggesting that that we actually get a laptop for this alone, um, which is another six hundred bucks. So um, we're talking sixteen hundred dollars. Yeah, there is a there is a town clerk laptop. I don't know, if it, but it was purchased for Did Lord elections, and so we hardly ever use it. I don't uh, know. If well, that that might be a. a and ideally, in a way, it would be good to have. It's a two. shame to have something sitting there for years, and you know, it'll be defunct before it's. Get so we used have a laptop. Up. You think we can use? <laughs> that would be up to Robin. Uh huh. Are you using it? I'm not using it. You used it? No. Then we might as well use it. We should try using it. Yeah, Monty. Um, at the last meeting, we talked about the owl. I didn't, I didn't do any yeah. research, but I mean, somebody could get a lot of components here to do this would. And sound like the, the owl, owl would just everything. replace the camera. Well, it sounded like it did everything. Yeah, all it well, is is the camera piece. Yeah, it, said it, it, it wouldn't be as good for the audio because it's a single point. Um, Does it, it have a speaker in it and stuff? Yeah. I think it does. Yeah, yeah. Well. it has one speaker. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'm just thinking you got all these components. Right. That one unit does what all this does. And yeah, I don't know how well. I mean, Leaf. Uh, well, yeah, Leaf is basically um, not all that um, 
favorable of an owl. There are a lot of shortcomings with them. Um, so I think that's why he, and this is what Hardwick is using now, and it does seem to be working pretty well. I think they- yeah, The Owl, it looks like the minimum owl is a thousand bucks. Yep. The Owl Pro is 1,200 $1, bucks. Yep. But it, you're gonna have one little speaker. So I don't know, I don't yeah. know, I just don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, look, towns are, other towns are buying things like that with their ARPA money. Yeah, this is this, this is, is all, this is right in the guidance. They don't so, even have to wait. So we would just get. I'm yeah. sure this would once we're through the process, this would this get funded for that. Um, yeah. Yeah. But you don't have to wait. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. And right, then we and then Leaf did the tag on to this um, uh, consultant fees. Of, you know, he asked for uh, fifty dollars for the um, this list that he put together. He did all the research uh, for where we could order it and what to order. And then he would be there to help um, with the setup and to train someone to, to learn how to, to, to do it all um, for another for $50. So he's asking for $100 uh, consulting fees. I guess we could call it. So we should add that to it too, I guess. Um, so if someone wants to make a motion. Um, are we going to include, are we including, we're going to, we're going to stay away from a new laptop for now. Right. Yeah. You're going to go with the. Four speaker and the, the four mics. Yeah, the yeah, I think that would give us the best. Just look at the same mic. It looks like it's about this big, yeah. so trying to hear, it might not be very good. The, for and that. they would be pretty much like what we have here right yeah, now. Yeah, they're a little. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would that way when we're in the, the town, town hall, hall, it makes um, more sense. Because yeah. there'd, be, there'd definitely more space. It would be nice in this renovation process. We permanently set a lot of this stuff up so you can just walk yes. in and turn it on. And yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there was a, uh, a, another microphone that would actually hang from the ceiling. Um, and Leaf said that, you know, if you ever were in a more permanent setup, like right. shuffling, you permanently, that, that the, might be a, The rooms I've thing. used for this purpose, they got all this stuff set up. So you just turn it on, turn on the computer, yep. and your big screen comes on, and everything will yep. go. Yep. Which is where I think we need to go, but we're we not, we're not there with the there. spot yet. Right. Yeah, the plan with the town hall is to actually have right. an internet connection there um, so that we could you know, plug all this stuff <coughs> in. And, um, so what, what what was kind of a final figure there, Paul? If we did I had sixteen hundred with the computer. Okay. If we don't get the computer, it's around a thousand bucks. Thousand. Yep. Plus another hundred dollars for and then consulting fees. Consulting fees, say eleven hundred yep. bucks. Yeah. Okay. And I would suggest we pay it out of the ARPA money. Yeah, I would. I would agree. Who's going to apply for that? Well, we need to make a we need to make a submission to the ARPA yeah. committee. Well, we can. We don't have to. I just no. I think okay. it's respectful that we do that. Yeah. No, we should. The we board should. the board has full authority to fund anything they right. want. The That's board right. makes the final decision. Is all I'm saying. What we did this for is have a public process. So I think it's only fair to run it through there. I don't want to. Yeah. Go around the process, but yeah. Yeah. we do have one member here. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think we should go submit a, a um, of course. So what the ARPA committee needs to do is come up with an application form um, so that we can do this and as soon as possible, I guess, so we can get this. We have stuff. an application form. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, but they're going to are going to wait for a deadline for people to submit their. No, we can do this right now. I know you can, but I'm just asking. Oh. Her, if you, if you mm -hmm. want. I I feel like I can't answer of what's going on with the right. application right now. I, mm -hmm. I don't feel like I have a good answer for you. So okay. We're all right. with that. Yeah. But I do have good announcements, but that I don't have a specific okay. announcement. So I suspect we'd be paying it out of our own funds for now, and then we'll and then we get can reimbursed do that. by that our would be the way to, right. Yeah, that would be the way to so, go. I mean, if we want to get on this, yeah. it's really our only option. Okay. So... Um, Did I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we... Let's say uh, $1,200, just that we um, spend $1,200 for the equipment for remote access for town meetings, town function meetings. So this could be for the select board. Uh, oh, good for that. That's not part of the motion. I make a motion that we spend just to buy it, yeah. $1,200. How do we use it? <laughs> Whatever. To, um, to acquire the equipment that's been um, presented to us by uh, um, our consultant, Leif Goldberg. Oh, second that motion. We have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion from the board or any member of the public? Well, I just want to say it wouldn't be ready for town meeting if you go through this ARPA committee thing. Well, no, we're going to buy this and then. Are you going to buy it? Yeah. We're going to buy it and then, okay. and then submit. We, we could. I just think it's better to. 
It's better to go through. Better to go through. I mean, through that's, that we set the committee up for that, right. and, and we should because because the board makes the final decision on where the funds go. The committee makes a recommendation. I just don't think it's fair. Although we could do that, I just don't think it's fair to have no, we should, the committee we and not use it myself. We should. They're there, and and they should be respected. It's and res not respectful of people's time. Right. So, so we got the last one. Did you have a feeling for when all that would happen? I'm just wondering. We have a meeting for the ARPA committee. And I'd love oh, to. Let me vote, let's vote, and then we'll. Okay. Okay. Then sorry. I'll yeah, there. I can. Yeah. So let's. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, it passes. So um, I could we'll go down do to the first. town office uh, sometime and and use the town's credit card and to buy this stuff. Order this stuff mm -hmm. this week, and just make sure uh, Brandy keeps a right account of it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know I, where it is. The credit card. Mm -hmm. I will not be there tomorrow. Okay. Well, I actually have a I full work week. It's going to be hard for me to. Oh no, wait, you're open tomorrow evening. Yes. Okay. Not really. <laughs> I'll come down tomorrow evening and, okay. and, and, and do this. All right, so we're up to follow-ups and updates. You had ARPA. Was ARPA on the list? It's not there, it's but not it's, there. A, it's an update. Okay. Well, just at, uh, we do have our experts lined up for a public meeting uh, February 16th at 6 o'clock. So we have someone from Vermont. Um, we get to these in towns and a uh, woman from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. What day of the week is the 16th? It's a Wednesday. Thank you. It's at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to have a remote as well as in person option. So you can do it here at the have... school or the town hall? I think the school is school. Um, <laughs> Is there a Oh, you're right. <laughs> uh, we'll have to run it past. I haven't run it past them yet. Okay. So, yeah. we just got. I just got the date solidified today, so I will call John tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, if we can get this stuff ordered tomorrow. It will be here within a week, as long as everything is available at this Wonderful. time. Yeah. Great. And, um, yeah, and then yeah, maybe, maybe that could me. be when Leaf shows us how to I'll start breaking it right away. It. Michael, maybe you would want to get some volunteers to get in on that demonstration from me. Right, right. You have more than one right. person yeah. knows how to run it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Can't rely on skip and skip for everything. No. No. <laughs> It's very bad in an organization that only have one person that can do anything. Yeah. Better have multiple people. Mm -hmm. Diana. I think you skipped over the town meeting discussion. No, we're on special town meeting. Yeah, we don't really have a town meeting. There wasn't a line for just No, it was just town special meeting? town meeting. No. We can talk about it. It's an update. So yeah, yeah. are you good with our Is that? Yeah. That was Thank it. you. I thought I saw that. Nope. nope. But we nope. can do it under a follow up. So follow up. Yeah, or other business or whatever. So that meeting will be uh, I just wonder if the pre-town meeting on Saturday, if that stuff would be available yes. at that point, because that would be, even though there's no voting during the pre-town meeting, some people might yeah. like to No, we would plan. We would plan. We set the pre-town meeting for the Saturday, Saturday before. Uh, right, Saturday the 26th at 10. Number is for that day. I better put that in my calendar. Like Mm -hmm. And we are going to, where have we decided to hold that? At the town hall? Town hall. Town hall. No, yep. I don't think so. We did. I think yeah, so. we did. Yes, we did. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just anticipating that there probably wouldn't be that many people mm -hmm. there. There usually isn't. No. Monty. How soon before town meeting can you request an absentee ballot? Uh, There's statute uh, for that. I don't know. I'm just curious. Ask our town clerk. As soon as they're ready. <laughs> <laughs> There, it's in my calendar. That's, that's not really I'll promise to try not to. Huh? That's not the answer I was looking for. No. Hmm. That's not the actual answer. Hmm. So let's see. I'll look. Is there, there must be something in state statute about that. There is, there that, is, I is a date by which they have to be available. I think yeah. it's maybe, I don't know if it's February 4th. I don't remember. It's not my job. <laughs> 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 We'll, we'll fight. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Have I got an answer. Official okay, answer. Here we go. The internet can't be wrong. iPhone. <laughs> well, this is from the Secretary of State. So it says, in Vermont, we make it easy to vote. If you prefer to vote early or by mail, you can vote starting as soon as ballots are available, but not later than 45 days before the primary or general election and 20 days prior to municipal election. So 20 days. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. So we have to have those ballots ready by 20 days. Yeah. So see, March 1st. And the internet can't be wrong. So February 10th. No. So I think the first thing yeah, we'll be working on a postcard to send to everybody, and then get the ballots ready and. Is there a major Hazen vote this year? There so, be a Hazen Robin, yeah. I think it's February 9th is when okay. we have to have those ballots ready for people to request an absentee ballot. So I was one of the people, and I think actually Laura... Double count my counting, but that's what just, I'm just looking back. Uh, we went to go do the counting, and we, we waited an hour, hour and a half for Greensburg to show up, so we didn't get started until like 8.30 or 9 o'clock. We were there till midnight. So and I thought they were supposed to count their ballots, and they should have known Never, that Michael. Yeah. No good deed but goes I unpunished. I know, but I don't want to be there. You know, I don't think anybody should have to be there till midnight, no, so I would <laughs> ask Hayes and Union to make sure that... Well, it's, not, it's actually the... The local election officials. The elect, well, the it's ballot the official. elementary well, whatever. school ballots that have to be commingled, but I think the Hazen ballots usually get commingled too. They do get commingled. And yeah. uh, I think there might be a new rule. I think we might have to count them here before taking them up there. I think that's what I read. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And each town will, will count their own, and then the total yeah. goes. Right. And then, then do they get counted again? Well, probably not. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's, a new, it's a new thing. It's, yeah, like yeah. you said, yeah. It's a different thing. I wonder if we could kind of find out what well, we people will, will be we subjected will. to. Subjected to. <laughs> it's not going to be your that problem that anymore, like Michael. I, I know, but I might be a counter, although I probably, I mean, for well, me to stay up till midnight is sort of like staying up all night, because I usually get up a few hours later in the morning. Well, yeah. so. Also, we haven't, I don't think Robin decided whether we're going to use the, uh, the tabulator no. or count them by hand. Because it's like $500 to, to get the machine program, program that wow. thing every time. All right. I would think that we'd be able to count them by hand. It's not a presidential election. Right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll volunteer here. I'll help. I'll, I'll help. I'll help. <laughs> I, I will agree to help. I have a media. our family. <laughs> <laughs> you need my glasses. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've been working on how I don't fog my glasses with the mask on. Mm-hmm. So Try that on EMS call at five below zero. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I, I had a front row seat to the uh, fire department putting out the mm. fire at Kyle Neal's. And oh, really? Wow. Let me tell you, they earned their keep. Yeah, we just fixed all the damage today. Yeah. Oof. You just did what? Fixed all the damage. To your own gear. All oh, the trucks froze and lines it was, froze it was and filled the water. And the wind was really whipping from the, the north. Pumps had and coolers and all kinds of things. That one truck was frozen solid by the time we were done, and that broke off a bunch of fittings and gauges. And yeah. were you able to use the hydrant at the mill? Pond? We did. Yeah. yeah. Until the line, four-inch line, froze solid. Eventually, mm-hmm. after six hours. Wow. Yeah. yeah. The wind was whipping. Well, what happens over time is it just North gets smaller and smaller right and smaller. Right down down the pond you can't, once water starts flowing, you better keep it flowing because if you stop for one minute, it, we had one hose, someone shut off, and in 30 seconds it was frozen. Wow. And then we had a pile of hose this deep in the building that was frozen for. Mm. Yeah. It was. Yeah, it was not a good brutal. thing, but hopefully. Any report from the fire inspector? It's uh. Confidential problem. It's not confidential. It's <laughs> undetermined at this <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah. And still smoking. Is it still smoking? It, it is put a, a, we went and put a thousand cups of water on it. Well, no, on Saturday morning, <laughs> Paul, there was actually flames and smoke. And I thought, well, I'll go over. I'll get my snow pusher yeah. and get a bunch of snow and throw it on top of it. But it's where it's still burning is under the, the tin roof yeah. that, that sort of over so that. You can't thing. go out there. So what I'd have to do is get an excavator to pull it off and. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't talk about now, but there's no insurance company to deal with for that at this right. point. So the town would have to pay for it. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's just sort what's of. going on. It's been my consuming for the last yeah. two weeks, a week and a half. It's taken all my time. So, all right. Okay. So, so I do have an update on meeting. our, I'll call it just general derelict building issues that we've had. Um, 
is only by, no, um, and I wanted to ask you, Robin, have the notices of violation, the one, the fines, notice of a letter about the potential of being fined to Ainsworth Road, has that gone out to those property owners? No. No, okay. And is there Bob any? has not gotten that one. Okay, what about on Flat Street? The that one has, that gone, one has out, gone out. And okay. they have sent something back to County Board of Adjustment. Thank you. Okay. I kept saying Z and B A. <laughs> okay. So, um, so they have appealed. Okay. Um, so, um, and then I, I did have a phone conversation with Carl Fuller. He's the A and R person who um, sent the notice to Mike McGlynn um, about um, the uh, folks, um, you know, um, with their uh, uh, application for a septic system that A and R is working on, and. Um, some of the issues with um, Mike's property um, regarding that. And he basically told me that, you know, it's the state that oversees the water and the sewage, septic. So it's not an issue for the town. To, it's something that Mike and other abutting property owners, uh, mostly Tim Appleton, and I also spoke to Tim, um, they're aware of what they have to do to address that, um, that notice. Um, but he, he did mention to me that um, the pro, you know we had talked some about having a health officer um, do an inspection and condemning a building, um, and he told me that that's basically a four-year process. So you could have a health officer do an, ex an inspection, and if the building um, did um, warrant uh, being condemned, then the owners of the building have four years to uh, mm -hmm. remediate that situation um, and uh, if they're living in the building it's pretty much impossible mm -hmm. to get them out um, and you probably know all this and this well. is what I've been telling people because it's my yeah. previous job that's what I did it was uh, the courts you know the person's home is their castle yeah. and uh, it's very difficult to actually we, we had been doing it and our department got sued in the mid 2000s and was charged with not closing buildings we were to compel people to right. make corrective action so that's why this is so tough that's what i've been trying to say in this process yeah. and in, in the age of our pandemic here it's even tougher it's even right? tougher because trying to get a court date for something that doesn't rise very high up on the charts for the judge is very difficult so and I, I, if someone was not if no one was living in the building then a, a, a condemnation of the building would um keep people from living in there. So, you know, my thought from talking with Carl is that the town really needs to be a little bit more proactive if there's a building that's looking pretty decrepit and no one's lived in it for four or five years. Mm -hmm. It might warrant... Um, Do we have a derelict building officer? We have a derelict building... We okay. have a dangerous building officer and we have a dangerous okay. building ordinance. Um, but not a derelict building. Not a, no, that's... T that not all derelict buildings are dangerous, that's the problem. Well, I'm that's, serious, yeah, that's, that's the that, problem we're into with this. That's pretty much up to the health officer, town health officer. And now, um, I just, uh, it's a new legislation, Bob. Um, Martin sent me an email that uh, the legislature has... Um, has passed a new uh, act. Um, and they passed it. I know for the what? last five years it's been proposed. Or, or, it's, or it's in the works. Yeah, it's I guess. been for about five years. Yeah, it's S uh, S two hundred one um, that um, where state fire inspectors um, might be that they might have health violations job, to their way. job. Yeah, so it was time to retire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gonna, and. Um, so that would be, um, but I think, you know, in, in the future, I think we just have to be aware of buildings that are... That yeah, there's are a, just an update. There's, there is a push to try to get some state agency to pick up the town health officer stuff. Mm, that would be great. I don't really think the fire marshal's office, the problem is they need 40 to 60 positions right. to pick it up, and they're probably going to give them four. And so I just said, yeah, time to go. But So that's the political hot potato. Yeah, it's like A&R with their enforcement and compliance. Right, it's there the same with burning. The two people for the state. Right, yeah, as the yeah. fire warden, they run into the same thing. They kind of want the town to enforce the state clean air violations, and we, I just won't do it because it's like it's the time, you know, going back to the health officer, and why I was bringing this up is I won't be in this seat in a couple more meetings, but for future boards, need to look at if you want enforcement of these things, you're going to pay somebody to do it because expecting a board member mm. 
part of why I don't want to be here is is the expectation that a select board member is going to stay on top of this. I mean, I was paid a lot of money to spend a lot of time, which is a hugely time consuming and involves court and writing affidavits and mm -hmm. search warrants. And that's not a job for someone who you're given a thousand bucks and, you know, it's 842 after taxes. Um, it's just a completely unreasonable right. request. That's one reason why I Back then, on the select yeah. board when I did, because the whole thing yeah, it's just on Cabot Road was so horrible. It was so horrible. It's just we don't have a. I mean, in that case, um, there, there were children involved, and so oh, they yeah. really had to move. And then we had to get them a new trailer, and at that point we had a grant program in town where we could lend them mm -hmm. money to replace the trailer, well, we mm -hmm. don't have that now. Mm -hmm. right. And mm -hmm. we also don't have a building code, which right. a lot of towns, or cities at least, do have, and I don't think we want one, but mm -hmm. if yeah. you did have one, it would make it easier to... So it's something for future boards to think of, because I, in my old position, at least getting paid, I ended up in court with... Mm -hmm injunctions over lead paint and over child abuse and you know it really quick could snowball into taking weeks of your time and that's why you know and this isn't a ten dollar an hour position it's a probably a thirty dollar an hour position if you want a quality person so right. but that's for somebody to think about um, and then um, uh, um, Bob also sent me an email which I found when I got home today from work um, that apparently Ryan McCall has uh, um, done a site visit at Flat Street, um, and uh, I'm not going to go through the details of it, but he did give them a number of things to for compliance. Um, he was able to speak with um, um, one. Uh, actually, the grandson was there when he did his site visit, but then uh, one of the ad adults um, of the couple um, did return his call and um, so he's given them um, some uh, issues of compliance um, and uh, but we'll see where that goes um, but, so that's kind of an update on the t at least the two properties that we've been um, discussing the, the most here uh, recently but, and sort of a, a sense of what to do as far as condemning a building if, if we choose to do that in the future and that's just I a question. I'm sure we're not the only town dealing with problems. Oh, yeah. Similar mm -hmm. to this. I just wonder if, if, if anyone knows of other successful cases around the state. I do. You do? Well, many other towns have a town uh, administrator or manager, whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it, that manages. As long as we're on this topic, <laughs> another reason I'm not going to stay sitting in this chair is the amount of work that's done by Michael mostly, but a bunch of us in the background, for example, probably had 40 hours into paving the parking lot down there when I worked on that. So you just, you know, mm -hmm. where an administrator, sort of touching this issue, administrator handles the day-to-day -day meeting with people, getting the permit applications filled out, filling, getting the RFPs written and getting the bids uh, written because you know town clerk and then we'll send that stuff out but somebody's got to write it someone's got to meet with the contractors um, and uh, so what others have done between having a town manager or administrator even if it's not full time and they've also paying positions to f oversee enforcement of town ordinances which is why I'm not necessarily opposed to town ordinances but I am opposed to having an ordinance where there's no um, same process for enforcing it because that's where people's frustration comes out mm -hmm. you know yeah. going down the poor zoning administrator trying to make him you know just at least they're paid by the hour but it's just you know you need somebody to to inf to deal with all the paperwork and the meetings and the potential court time yeah and yeah. just following up on what Paul's saying at the Last year, um, after town meeting day of VLCT, um, they have like a select board kind of um, training, I guess you call it, where a bunch of different people come and talk on different subjects. And one of the subjects that was talked about last year is that there are towns, um, especially the smaller towns, that there are two different forms of, I mean, Hardwick has a full-time town, town manager, manager right? but there's also like an assistant town manager or you know, basically part, there are two different designated positions um, that are sort of part-time. Um, 
And I think at some point um, Woodbury would benefit from that. Um, I know um, I know a couple of the select board members in Hardwick, and and uh, you know they mentioned well, what what we pretty much do is just go to the meeting policy, and sign papers. Work on policy. The town manager right. pretty much puts the agenda together and right. presents the information that's needed, and they make you know they go yay or nay. And, and that's been that's where I was going. They just sit down and where's the oh here's my agenda here's what you, okay. Yeah. So, um, How does the town decide on payments? There would be something that we would, it, it yeah. would have to be decided. Yeah, the town. board would have yeah. to yeah. collectively yeah. make it and put it before the voters because it's yeah, a funding have issue. A road administrator, I don't think, right. you know, you need to budget for it. You just have to budget for it. But, but so my, my problem is I think you're, you're losing the potential of a lot of people who are willing to serve just simply for time. Because I know for me, I'd be happy to keep going. It's just I cannot, I cannot put the time and I don't want to. Right. Pretend and try to do it without. So, um, and that—that's my reason for, um, you know, not finishing out my term is that it takes an incredible amount of time to do this, especially when you're doing the town managing stuff. Because right. um, Michael, I can tell you, has done yeoman service. Mm -hmm. Right. And it just, yeah. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. A lot of time. Um, and it was very eye-opening. And I said, "Well, you've been on the board before." Mm -hmm. Um, but those, yeah, it's been it's much worse now, I think. And it, yeah. and those that are going to be walking into this seat, I feel bad for them right. because I, I, it hasn't been that pleasant for a lot of the time. And it's just the the stress, the sleepless nights, because you do worry about this stuff. Uh, and the other side of this is, frankly, people are not very nice. Sometimes. You know, is why I've been saying and saying we should be able to uh, disagree politely. Without calling, uh, we we've had people call us. My favorite was the most crooked select board on the history of Earth. Mm. I've been called a thief. I've been called a liar. I've been called. You can see my stress coming up. I've been mm. called uh, shady. Mm. So. That's not me, and so I just I don't need that in my life. Mm. So yeah, that this week I got called greedy. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. After putting in sixty some hours for no pay, mm. and the so, other thing is that the town manager is a whole different form of government, and that does yes. have to go. Yeah, it's a whole. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. But an administrator, some. Not administrator. You're, you're kind of looking at two things. To me, I would say hire a part-time administrator, and then if we're going to go down the ordinance road, we need to pay that position because oh. it's a difficult position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have to have clearly laid out expectations. And I'm not talking about a full-time job, but when the person spends time in the job, the you know, fire warden job. If you know, I, I've never written a ticket because as soon as I write a municipal ticket, I got to go to court. Well, I only get a $500 stipend. I can't go to court. And it was been to court. I've got to collect evidence. I've got to, you know, I do this for my regular job. And previously working in major crimes and stuff, I so I know how to do it. But you could spend all day collecting the evidence to go to court for one burning violation. You know, I've got to so who did I talk to? When did they get the notice? How was the notice? What were they burning? Do you have photographs? Has it been documented? I don't buy for that. Yeah. Not for 500 bucks. You know, and when, um, just in regard to ordinances, when, uh, when we, you know, there was an issue before the select board um, maybe a year or so ago, maybe even more now, um, about uh, of uh, people wanting a junk ordinance or some situations right. in town. Um, mm -hmm. So um, VLCT had a model junk ordinance and the town of Wolcott had basically kind of made a junk ordinance sort of based on that model. So I talked quite a bit to the one of the select board members in uh, Wolcott and and they said, you know, the everything works fine as long as the property owner um, is Complies. willing to comply. <laughs> when they don't. <laughs> when they don't, it's, yeah, the, the yeah. whole enforcement thing is, it just gets, mm. it gets long and it's really bogged out. down. Um, it just, yeah, things just bog right down. So ordinances are one thing and, and um, the whole, the enforcement of them yeah. when there's non-compliance is. Because once you go to non-compliance, you need to hire an attorney essentially to process it. Because like, I've been involved right up and in including where People have been living for four years in a building with no power, no water, no sewer, and mm. they just aren't leaving. Mm. And the police don't want the visual of them dragging someone down the stairs out of their house, you know, unfortunately. Mm. So, 
I want to say thank you all very much. I mm -hmm. say that very sincerely. Yeah, no I think you're doing a really honorable job. I don't think anyone has a thousand things. Any of you are greedy on any level. So just, yeah. Well, <laughs> some do. I can share it all. I've never heard anyone say anything to that effect. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we have any more updates? Anything else? To, any other? Oh, there was one. Diane. Um, we we're putting together the postcard for warning people about town meeting and how to get a ballot and everything. Um, last year's postcard had the Zoom information. Do you think we're going to have that this year? I think for the pre-town meeting that we're going to. Yeah, yeah we're going to try to do that. Yeah. We're going to try. So how can we get that information? Okay, well, we'll have Well, to you could set the Zoom meeting up, whether we'll yeah. have the equipment to do it. No, you, we can set it up anytime. Yeah, we can set okay. it up anytime. And I know how to do that. I could okay. either show you how to do it, or it's, it's pretty simple. Yeah. Um, and we could have it set up, um, and then we'll just have the equipment there, hope, hope, so we'll, hopefully. Yeah. So we can put, publish that on a postcard. We could, yeah. If people want to come to the pre-town meeting, they can, or yeah. they can watch Yeah, and we'll just it. have to take a risk. What we've done in the past when we've done Zoom meeting, in fact, that whole, well, however long we did our select board meetings with Zoom meetings, you would have the, the meeting ID number would be made public, and then if people wanted to access the meeting, um, they had to inquire about what the passcode was. Right. right. And that was just a way of trying to keep somebody who wanted to di totally disrupt the meeting. Which out. I've been involved in for two years in an, another one of my yeah. positions. Wow. But, I mean, we could just take the risk that that wouldn't happen and have both of things, because it is a barrier. You know, it's another step you have to go to get the information. And, and once you do Zoom for a public meeting, uh, the VLCT has a has very little narrative guidelines. that you need to read. Because, yeah. like, yeah. Uh, we're supposed to make everybody identify themselves. you got to mm -hmm. tell everybody to turn off their mics. You have a public comment. You got to lay out only two minutes. It's, you got to read this little narrative oh, at the yeah. beginning to make sure, because because what happens is someone will take over your meeting. They can just start talking. Or right. And there is there is you know whoever is the host can can shut can off. shut that person off. Um, so we would need to have somebody. Watch the Zoom it. makes it challenging to a yeah, particularly if it's a contentious public meeting. So, so that would be something for the moderator to. Well, luckily, he doesn't have to deal with that in his no, meeting. No, right. The, the, the pre-town meeting, you'll have to deal That's with that. That's what I mean, for the pre-town meeting. Because, unfortunately, you're going to get elected for... We, we could have... I mean, the moderator shouldn't have to be the person yeah. monitoring the... No, he should show. not be. Yeah. No, he can't be. And I'm, I'm happy There's somebody else to has do to that, do that. Or, or Tegan... Because normally what we tell yeah. people in our, my larger meetings, and I go to quite a few, is you, people are to ask their questions in the chat. And then someone monitors the chat, and then you say, "Okay, Fred Jones has a question," and then you call on Fred yeah. Jones, and, and or, or the if you got like I've been in meetings with three hundred people, the moderator or the, the the chat person would go, "Okay, I've got fourteen of the same question. I'm essentially right. going to ask is the, is the pen blue that you're writing with? Yeah. You know, there is that's a little the best way to manage that icon too with the Zoom meetings. Too. It's easy with ten or twelve people. You start getting into the hundreds. It starts getting right. really tough." So the blurb that you're speaking about that Vermont League is yep. using, that's a legal blurb that you need yes. to well, say? Yeah. Well, I don't think you're required by statute, but what it does do is notify everybody participating in the meeting of what the rules are. Because what, what we've had trouble with is someone who wants to get in the public comments section, which we've had here, and talk for 25 minutes. Right. So when I'm moderating a meeting like that, I tell people in the public comments section, we are not discussing this. You can make a comment, you get your two minutes, and then we're going to move on because right. I had somebody get really animated because I didn't answer their question. I said, you're not on the agenda. Mm -hmm. You know, it's respectful to these boards if you get on the agenda and we'll put some time in there. But to come in and we've had it here where someone spends, you know, 45 minutes on a public comment. By the time mm -hmm. we go in, it's like, if you had this much, how about we <laughs> call us and we'll put it on the agenda. <laughs> yeah. And to be respectful um, of everybody's time. So, so that's why it's there to stop the filibusters and yeah. stop the... Yeah. And just let people know. You get two minutes. That's it. And then we're going to move on. Yeah. Or, or, and, or we're going to, if, if you won't, we've had people that would be on the meeting but wouldn't identify themselves. You just get a phone number and mm -hmm. you say, this phone number, I need you to identify yourself. If you don't, we're going to kick you out of the meeting. Yeah. So there is the language on some of the former select board agendas, there was abbreviated language on that. And then um, on the planning commission, um, different meeting agendas, um, 
escaped being much more thorough than I am. I um, had the, the full thing on there. Um, so there is, we do have examples of what could be put on an agenda well, warning. Um, and and uh, of course the LCT has that. Has also. That's all where that came from. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just look on their website. Yeah. And that was on the warning, that blurb? It's right on the uh, meeting agenda warning like. Um, yeah. Well, there's in the thing you can read. I, I, I maybe I'll dig it out. I have it somewhere. I'll, I can send. I think I have your email. Yeah. Because um, okay. I have it. Because I, I uh, we used when we were doing it, we started reading it. It's mm -hmm. about a page. Just yeah. Hello, this is a public meeting. These are the rules. If you have something to say, get in the chat. If you're in the public comment section, you get two minutes. You will be asked to identify yourself. You don't be kicked out of the meeting. Blah blah blah. So it's something that gets introduced. At the beginning, at the very beginning yeah. The Just to lay the ground right. rules, and if you don't obey the rules, the moderator is going to boot you. Yeah. Yeah. So we. we probably that's how you that. maintain it's some civility, good. and it works okay. Yeah. So that doesn't really sound like something we need for the ARPA. Yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't meeting. probably. That's, that's a Q and A meeting. Yeah, I, not yeah. probably yeah. not. I think for you, I just lay out and say, hey, we just please keep just your questions concise. Let's not talk over each other. Yeah. Please keep your mics off when you're not speaking, because you'll get all this feedback. Because some people turn their mic on, I leave it on all the time. I don't even leave my camera on anymore because once you record these meetings as a public record, they can request that recording. So they're looking at what's in your house. Mm -hmm. So I just leave my camera off. Yeah. And right at the moment, um, if there is a like a hybrid meeting where there's remote access, but there's also an in-person meeting, um, uh, towns are not required to record the meetings, but when Last year, when we were in the emergency lockdown, um, we did. We were required to yes. record the meeting, um, and fortunately, HCTV did that for us. They basically um, oversaw the Zoom meetings, um, and, and you just hit that record button. The moderator. Yeah. 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 So now, my suggestion in the recording department, if you're in a Zoom, I would record the meeting because I have gotten public records requests for the recording, which is legitimate. Because yeah. they can get a transcript, but the problem is they say, well, you have a recording, or you should have had a recording of this video. So I would just record them and save them as a matter of course. Mm -hmm. I've done a whole bunch with this a very painful exercise. Yeah, and the recording is done how? You just click record. Press a little button. The, you just press a button it's, on the... It's in the Zoom It's in the Zoom. 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 Whoever's the moderator... Yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah, whoever the moderator will have a little recording, and then it'll send a little message up to everyone who's participating. This meeting's now being recorded. Because I, what I have is people then request the recording. Even even though they get the minutes, they also want the recording so they can compare it. Mm -hmm. It creates a whole other level of complexity for you. Mm -hmm. so so sorry. Pre town meeting probably won't have. Uh, no, no, yeah. it's it's when they get a more contentious. Yeah, if someone feels like somebody's. Pre town meeting is just a discussion. Yeah, it's a discussion on Yeah, it's not there are no decisions being on. made. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, I missed an exchange. Did you, Michael, say that you would moderate the pre-town meeting? Well, either I or Tegan okay. um, might be willing to do that too. I could do it as well. Yeah. Okay. You mean open? I'm going to be there too. So you, I, you I shouldn't have to do it. Somebody right. else should be taking. Yeah. You know. Well, you somebody's got to moderate the pre-town. Well, no. Moderate. You, moderate the digital. The, the, the uh, looking at the laptop. Yeah. The participants. Yeah, he, Mike, those guys are going to. It's. The moderator shouldn't have to do that, but the person oh, okay. doing that can let the moderator know that so and so uh, on the right. we have a question in the chat. Has a question. Right. 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 Someone monitor the chat. And okay. you still need to moderate you, for you, the pre town right. meeting. You yes. can mo be moderator yes. at the pre town yeah. meeting. Okay. This is this is moderating order. the okay. people. There's no voting. It's just it's just keep yeah. order. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, at the Maybe beginning, you say, if you have a question, moderate. you're out on the line, please put your question Monitor. in the chat or raise your hand in the chat. Mm -hmm. You'll be called on. Please turn off your mic. Please mm -hmm. don't speak unless you've been called upon because it just gets really out of hand. Not not that someone's trying to just, uh, you, get, you can't hear anybody. Yeah. yeah. Trying to do both is too many balls. To yeah, you can't do it. can't do it. Without okay. skin down. Are we good? I think so. And I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. I will second that motion. And I will vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.